Okay. Uh, I think that the woman qua woman part of the writing is the same in that personality and character and the qualities that make someone a good character or make them a bad character are going to be the same no matter what you're writing, if it's now or behind or before or the future or whatever. But I think that writing fantasy, uh, there's a lot of things that a woman can do in the modern age with a car and a gun that she couldn't do if you were writing a book that took place before the 19th century. Fantasy is more so. There's a lot more things that Buffy or a girl who can cast spells or a girl who can see. I mean, once you allow for magic, it overcomes a lot of the limits that would normally make it so that a woman was in a position of being limited to what she can do. So I think it gives you more uh, options. And I think fantasy gives you more options to have a slightly more traditional feminine figure and also be powerful. In science fiction, if it's sciency, the girl's probably going to seem pretty modern, just because picking up a gun and a, or a ray gun and running into battle is kind of a modern type of, of thought. In fantasy, you get the option to have a kind of old-fashioned girl, but also have her be as tough and able as you know a, as you can think of. But I mean, can she destroy galaxies? I mean, it's depending on how high you want to make her magic level. But I, I think it gives you the ability to. Uh, kind of take any kind of character you want and put them in a position where they can take on any kind of problem you might want them to take on, which is much harder to do if you're writing a category <laughs> romance. <laughs> you know, it's much harder to figure out how to get your female character to be able to do these things than if you can give her the ability to, you know, call dragons or make fire or whatever it is that, that's going to make it useful for her to, to move forward. So you're saying it's the limitations of the genre, it's not necessarily the writer. But it's in the genre, the genre's expectations. The expectations, the actual definition of the genre. Right, and I think that that only really pertains to romance, because when you move out of that and you think of mysteries or fantasy or science fiction, there's no difficulty in thinking of uh, mystery detectives, you know, Amelia Peabody, let us say, or, or in fantasy and science fiction. So it's only romance that has that particular, and probably westerns. I don't, I, I mean, I don't even think of Westerns as a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can sort of see that. But then, even with, even with, even with historical novels, I mean, there, the, it's the classic complaint of historical novels that they have modern people running around in 14th century England or something like that. It's just annoying. But it's, that's one of the places where you see that, where the women are mysteriously liberated, even though they're not in some way or another. You know? <laughs> that among romance readers, and so many of them are women, there's a, there's a great awareness among them and a, 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 and a sensitivity to the, I mean, uh, one of the worst criticisms that they can have of, of, a, of a heroine in a romance novel is that she's weak, or that she's TS, TSTL, which stands for Too Stupid to Live. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I think that there's at least among the readership, or at least the readership that I'm aware of, which is the readership that's online, so maybe it's slightly different than the, than, um, than the bulk of, of romance readers. Um, they seem very um, sensitive and, and aware of, you know, of, a, of a heroine being strong and, and well-rounded because they, they, see, they read so much and they see so many different heroines. That and I think that's true, but I think that there's a, there are two different genres. There's category romance and there's romance. And a lot of romance actually crosses over with speculative fiction. And all of the things that we expect in fantasy heroines, um, we would expect in straight romance heroines, which isn't opposed to uh, uh, straight romance heroines can be gay, um, but as opposed to category <laughs> romance heroines. Contemporary romance is what means. Yeah. Or, like or historical romance, right. or, but not category. I think one of the challenges when writing a female heroine today is uh, we don't want to make her too weak, and we also don't want to make her too masculine. It, it, I think there's a there's a you know, we're what we're fighting against an old tendency to, to limit women, but there's also kind of a new tendency to say well you have to act like a man or you're not important, and I, I think it's it's a kind of a fun challenge to try to 
find ways to, to get female characters who can have, who can be feminine, but also able, so that they're a driving force in the plot, but they don't necessarily, and, and they might be really tough in certain ways, but they don't necessarily have to be really tough in all ways, because otherwise, why aren't we writing about guys? So, <laughs> I think that's one of the, one of kind of a, a challenge, and, and one of the challenges to it is that modern readers are not on the same line about where they think that line is. You know, if you talk to a group of readers, some will say, this was a great character, and the others say, she's too weak, or they'll say she was too strong, or whatever it was. But I still think it's a lot of fun to try to find that, and that's why I was thinking that when you have something like magic to back her up, you have more ability to make your character have both of these qualities uh, available to her. You're saying that it's the, the power differentials that's the argument for guns, because gun, if you have a gun, you are as powerful, everyone with a gun is as powerful. You know, where it's not muscles anymore. Right. It, you, once you get, using a gun as an example, once you have a heroin and she has a gun, her it emotional it attitude towards what she's doing can be as feminine as you like, and she can still blow the bag that way. <laughs> so it gives, you, it gives you the ability to let her have kind of the good qualities of being a woman and still have the good qualities of being able to act independently. So talk about women in the fiction that way. Now, if you're looking at a well-defined female character in a fantasy setting, can you give me some points that you think beyond being a strong, independent character. To, to the partners of fantasy characters, there are certain things that that character needs beyond that. Is, there, is it a power, or is it a style, or is it something else that defines it? This is a female character, she's strong to her. How does that differentiate her, or is it something that's strictly tied to the book, since we're talking about women in the fantastic? Surely that's the same thing you have to do that 